The world is facing challenges that require strong international cooperation. In 2021, Italy leads the G20, the group of the 20 major advanced industrial and emerging economies. The mission is to address the world's present and future challenges and to support a sustainable development. The Italian presidency of the G20 has led the Edison Foundation and the Economic Research Center Kranek of Catholic University in Milan to take a close look at where Italy stands in the group of the key players. In a booklet they shed some light on key economic indicators that are worthwhile to be kept in mind. They indicate the potential for a rapid economic recovery in Italy. They point to factors that could serve as a guideline for a more sustainable development. Together, the G20 economies represent around 90% of global GDP, 80% of global trade and two-thirds of the world's population. The world economy suffers from the disruptive effects of major external shocks like the global financial crisis or the COVID-19 pandemic. Italy's globalized economy is based on a robust manufacturing sector with smart specializations. Italy's industries are extremely creative and flexible. Industrial production not only covers fashion, food and home furniture, but also mechanical engineering as well as chemicals and pharmaceuticals that represent niche products. Italy's ongoing internationalization in the pharmaceutical sector has led to strong export growth. For some countries like the US or the UK, we are the first destination for their foreign direct investments in the pharmaceutical sector. However, we are also an industry with many highly internationalized Italian companies. Around 70% have a strong international network. Our export figures are very strong. E quindi abbiamo dei valori di export straordinari. Italian companies are strong exporters due to regional clusters of expertise in traditional and innovative industries. Italy has a high ranking in the trade balance of key sectors, such as the three Fs, fashion, furniture, food and wine. Italy has the second highest trade surplus in these sectors among the G20 and is number one in Europe. Italy is also a leader in the three M's, machinery, metal products and medicaments. Italian companies generate the third largest trade surplus in these sectors and the second largest in Europe. Italy has developed Europe's second largest manufacturing sector in terms of value added, behind Germany. This has been achieved despite the lack of big industrial groups and thanks to a dynamic and innovative network of small, medium-sized and medium-large companies. We have global players that have further developed their strong market position. They are being supported by a network of small and medium-sized companies with a high level of expertise to contribute to the final product. Excluding mineral fuels, Italy's economy is among those with the highest trade surpluses in the world. We should keep in mind that around 50% of this trade surplus is generated by mechanical engineering. This means that Italy's expertise goes far beyond the traditional fashion and food sectors. It incorporates the medium and high technology industries in niche markets of highest quality standards. 
Italy becomes Europe's scientific calculation hub. Bologna will host a next generation supercomputer. The European project, in cooperation with a network of Italian universities and research centers, aims to make supercomputing resources more widely available. This is a digital revolution. This revolution has an extremely important impact on the world of production and on the overall society. Intelligent machines coordinating production processes and directly connected with people and products. The fourth industrial revolution has begun. From 2015 to 2018, Italy's Industry 4.0 plan has set the stage for important investments into the digital transformation of industry. In that regard, Italy's important packaging industry is a world leader in innovative solutions. I think the opportunities of the digital modernization in the Western world will be particularly important for our companies. In the medical sector, big data can help with early diagnosis and personalized therapies. Artificial intelligence is a key element in digital health technologies and in the use of industrial robots. The stock of industrial robots is on an upward trend in all sectors of the economy, especially in metal products and industrial machinery. Here we have robots that can support our workforce and substitute some of their tasks. They are changing the way we produce. The interaction of robots, humans and the environment are the challenges that drive our century. On December 12, 2015, 195 countries adopted the first ever legally binding global climate deal in Paris. L'accord de Paris pour le climat est accepté. A global action plan to reduce emissions and to limit global warming. COP21, COP21, the international agreement on the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, is a big challenge for the industry. New thinking and the ability to innovate will be decisive for success. Italy is highly industrialized. It has the seventh largest manufacturing sector of the G20. At the same time, energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions are less relative to other large economies. The Italian industry is working on keeping emissions in check and on further cutting them, also by increasing the use of wind and solar energy. Here is another challenge, to become autonomous in delivering the energy to our production sites. Having photovoltaic systems makes the company an independent energy producer, reducing the overall impact on the planet. Italy has achieved the highest score for environmental standard certificates in relation to its GDP. Well known as Italy's capital of fashion, design and finance, Milan hosted the World Expo 2015, presenting an award-winning experiment in green architecture. The Bosco Verticale di Milano, the vertical forest, is a model for a sustainable residential building. It hosts 800 trees, 4,500 shrubs and 15,000 plants that regenerate the air and enhance urban biodiversity.
The successful concept has been exported to China, France, Mexico, Africa, India and to many other parts of the world. Green architecture is also a trend in Italy's important wine sector. We are here at our winery in the Chianti Classico area that we have inaugurated in 2012. It was a project that took seven years to succeed. The idea was to create a winery that would hardly be noticed from the outside. Italy is Europe's top wine producer in areas that have UNESCO World Heritage status. It's with a great sense of responsibility that we try to keep these magical places in the best shape. We want to hand them over to the next generation in the best possible conditions. Italy tops the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites that attract tourists from around the world. UNESCO World Heritage Sites are considered to be of outstanding value to humanity. Wine and tourism go hand in hand. The opportunity to taste local wine and food is a great experience. International tourists love to visit Italy. It's their top travel destination. For tourists from many of the G20 countries like Germany, the US, China or Australia, Italy is the first destination in the European Union, with most nights spent in 2019. Agritourism is becoming increasingly popular. This is due to people's desire to experience farm life and learn about how food is produced. In Sicily, most of our fruit and vegetables are available all year round. You will never be without fresh fruits and vegetables to prepare throughout the year. There is a very important biodiversity. Southern Italy is an agricultural powerhouse with a richly diversified production in fruit and vegetables. A healthy climate and environment are extremely important for sustainable growth and for a long and healthy life. Italy scores relatively high also on the overall level of human development when carbon dioxide emissions and the material footprint on the planet are taken into account. 
The path towards sustainable development remains a challenging step-by-step -step process. The Edison Foundation and Cranach present key indicators to be kept in mind. They point to the potential of combining economic recovery, technological innovation, quality of life and respect for the environment in coming years. A great opportunity for everyone and for generations to come.